Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. On this episode, we take a look and review recently released Marvel's Avengers. After really playing the game for about a good week now, I'm both very satisfied as well as disappointed. Being a huge role-playing adventure fan and action fan, I found this game to be very intense and very story heavy, which falls right into my wheelhouse. Please be aware that I'm playing the game supposedly all patched up and on the Xbox Series X. So the frame rate is smooth as silk, even in its chaotic sections and also in multiplayer. Marvel's Avengers was developed by Crystal Dynamics and released by Square Enix in 2020. Enjoying the Marvel Cinematic Universe in theaters, I found the game takes from that universe for the story with some elements found within the comic books today. The story is very immersive and done quite well. There are no choices to be made, but the story revolves around Kamala Khan and is really her origin story while she interacts with the Avengers in seeking justice for Inhumans like herself. It truly feels like Crystal Dynamics watched every MCU film and took major notes as they were told the story from Khan's perspective. It feels like this storyline could have been released in its own film in theaters and takes cues from the fantastic action moments that the MCU is so popular for and is really done well. They were keeping the Inhumans in here. What happened? This is where they hurt them. Hulk. I need you to destroy this lab. Smash! Restrain the Hulk. You saw the truth, Banner. The action is also done well, with Kamala feeling like Kratos from the God of War, but still feels unique enough as my player of choice to be in the game with Black Widow and Hulk as a close second. The reaction and combinations the characters do are smooth and visually appealing to the eye and an absolute blast to actually control these heroes like never before. All characters are able to do what others can do but in their own style and super powered moves really make a true difference in having a preference in choosing when you're progressing throughout the story. Being able to upgrade moves, powers, and equipment are fun as well as you progress finding items throughout your missions and campaign. I have never felt I needed to purchase any other equipment and I'd rather use most of the currency in buying new outfits and other power-ups. The visuals are very stunning as well as they come from the team that rebooted Tomb Raider. Although the characters do not look like their silver screen counterparts. I still felt that it was new enough that the experience to get to know the characters once again was there. With all the visual effects on screen and the action, there is much more ramped up, especially in 4 player multiplayer. The game can be extremely chaotic, but plays very smoothly for the Series X. Now all the good and done. The main campaign can be done in 12 to 15 hours depending on the side missions you do parallel to the main storyline. For those wanting to hit every mission, maybe 25 to 30 hours. The main issue is after the main storyline, which I have no complaints with at all, there really isn't much else to do. SHIELD will always have side missions to help their cause, but is usually the same mission, fighting the same enemy from AIM and then getting a new item and experience. The main problem with missions is it can be very boring at times as they start to blend together. The campaign is so well weaved into the storyline, it keeps you glued to see what happens next. The complete opposite with the missions. Here they 
stragglers thank you avengers with this we stand a fighting chance finally we're back fury i probably will get the dlc later on as the storyline continues with new characters like kate bishop but what is left after the story has a lot to be desired or at least thought out fully yes the action is fun but doing the same thing over and over can take you only so far this reminds me a lot of Dragon Age Inquisition with its own war table, but their missions actually had a story attached to them. Marvel's Avengers gets an 8.0 out of 10 for its fantastic story, visuals, and combat mechanics, but it is left high and dry post-campaign with little reason to return with the same missions, just different environments to complete them in. Hopefully with more DLC coming and with upgrades, Crystal Dynamics can get the game up to speed where it truly needs to be. That's it for me on this review of Marvel's Avengers. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Be ho out and great. Take us out of here and I will see you all next upload. The Avengers were set up. Cap was murdered. You think I don't know that? Huh? I've replayed that day in my head a thousand times. The Avengers take the ball despite saving the day, and that bastard Tarleton walks away smelling like a rose. And guess what? Guess what? No one cares. No one cares. The world needed someone to blame, and he gave them their scapegoat. So, unless you have some kind of astounding proof, I suggest you both get off my land. What is that? Proof. Damn.